What is up, everyone? Welcome to another Rust electrical tutorial. I'm Niceish, and today we are talking the clan circuit. Uh, now, obviously, if you don't want to use this battery backup system for nine turrets, you can just use this on your base anyway. So um, you can skip the turret part if that's what your goal is. Uh, so the clan circuit that I'm calling the clan circuit anyway is a combination of the battery backup circuit mixed into the max turret uh, circuit, which I've covered in previous videos. You can see the battery backup. Uh, video if you want more detail on this and the max turrets i have a lot of information there about turrets including this max turret on one switch um, we're going to be making the battery backup in series so this the number one battery will be our green battery the middle battery will be our blue battery or battery backup number one and then battery backup number three or two i guess would be the black battery so this first one's gonna be our primary battery um, and i'll just kind of explain that as we go so to set up the eight hour ba battery backup which is the first the first section of this uh you're gonna need a couple of branches we're gonna set those up just the way i did in the other video just to make it easy to follow uh and then i'm gonna put an xor switch up here so real quick note uh you can use a or switch or an xor switch if you just do the first two um but if you do all three the 12 hour battery backup that we covered here in the end you can't use two OR switches. You can use one OR switch and an XOR switch or two XOR switches. And the reason is that the OR switch takes volts, the XOR switch doesn't. Uh, it doesn't matter about their parameters. The XOR switch only allows one to pass through at a time, so you can't have two and the OR switch doesn't care. But the way the battery backup system works, it doesn't matter because only one input will ever be active at a time on either switch, so it doesn't matter. So. I recommend two XOR switches or one OR and one XOR. That's your limit. Um, okay, so to get started, I'm going to run power and I have 300 um, volts coming in here. So 298 leaving this branch here. Uh, and, you know, 300 is kind of for two batteries. That's very easy to do. You could do that. This is, this is essentially a two windmill setup. Um, so I suggest that you have at least around 300 coming in. So, you know, either two windmills or a bunch of solar panels. So uh, the branch out is going to run to the uh, input on our our branch down here like this. Uh, now I'm going to run the green line is going to be the, the primary battery and the blue line will be our, our secondary battery. So we're going to run from the branch out. And it's very important that you use the branch out here uh, because you have to be able to set this to a very specific voltage for this one. So we're going to run the green line to our input on our first battery here. Again, this is going to be the primary battery. And so you're going to have to follow the rust charging efficiency rule. Uh, where you need to, because they only have an 80% of charging efficiency, so you have to send at least 125 volts to this. I'm going to send 180 to this. Um, it's a really solid number to keep this charged, and then whatever's left over is going to charge my um, blue battery and eventually both of these batteries. And so for the blue line charging line, the blue battery charging line, I'm going to just run that right along here like I did this one. And this battery is going to be our secondary battery and so it doesn't have to follow the charging rule because it will be at an active usage of zero once it's all set up um, and so currently right now it's receiving 117 this one's receiving over 125 which is important the primary has to follow that rule uh, now for the outputs here you're going to run the green line the green battery our primary battery you're going to run that output uh over to this this uh branch right here there we go. And then we're gonna run the blue output to the blue line side of this. We got you know the green lines, the A side, the blue lines, the B side. Um, that's just arbitrary. I just did that for this tutorial. So I'm gonna run this blue line, and this time I'm just going to go ahead and just jumper that over and bring that to uh, this blocker over here, because this is where the blue line is going to travel. All right, so uh, now we can continue the green line from the, the branch out of this branch, which is important. You're gonna run that up to this uh, XOR switch and, or maybe an OR switch if you chose that. And the blue line is gonna come from the other side. Uh, now we need to send, we need to block this blocker to keep the blue battery out of, out of, uh, out of commission, if you will, until it's time. So that actually, so with a couple of, uh, of uh, changes here, I think just this one left, right? Yeah, we can set this one to 98. And the reason you're gonna, do, you're gonna do that is that you have 100 coming in, it needs one, so you have, you have 99 left. We need one for this side, so 98 here. This sends us that one. And what we've done actually is, uh, this is it. We've got this set to 180 for our primary, so anything over 125, whatever's left is going to our secondary, so 117. And if you look at this, the primary shows an active usage of, of 99. So without that charging efficiency amount, 
minimum 125 i suggest more this would be dying already because you know you've you've put load on it by setting this up so it's uh important to recognize that that's why so that has active usage this does not have active usage because despite being charged and hooked up to a blocker that blocker is blocked so when this battery dies this will go from 100 to zero and it'll release this battery and allow it to pass through and that's how it works that's why we're not double dipping we don't have the problem with double dipping if you hook up batteries this way uh, so at this point this thing is ready so what we can do now real quick is we'll set up our turrets uh, again if you have seen the other video this will be a quick review but the most efficient way is of course to use uh, splitters if you're doing the, 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 the max turret of nine and then you just put one splitter up here like so and then we can just hook them up so I'll just hook these up in colors so we'll do red group so you're just gonna hook each turret to the output of each one uh, this can be the blue group I guess uh, we will make this one here and then we'll have the final one over here and this will be the yellow group. And so then all you do after you set up this part is you're going to connect all of these together uh, to this splitter up here. So we'll drop this one down to that one, this one to this one. So we've just made a, there we go. Should look like that. Uh, and then all we have to do now is run our switch out. We're gonna run that to our uh, main part over here. We'll just stick that up there. I get it, there we go. And then um, we're gonna run the output here. This is the output to our, our base. In this case, this is gonna all be for turrets. We're gonna run that straight to this. And there you go. That's nine turrets, one switch, and eight hours of real-time battery backup. So if you destroy either one of these batteries, the other one will continue, or if, or if, the, if they destroy your inputs, your two windmills say, uh, this battery will eventually die in, in, in a little over four hours, about four hours. And then this one will kick in after this one. And so there you go, that's eight hours, nine turrets, one switch, boom. Okay, so next thing we're gonna do is, I'm gonna unhook this. I'm going to show you how to uh, expand this existing setup here to 12 hours. And so all you have to do is actually copy this switch pattern on the top here, this branch, the blocker, and the XOR switch. And so I'm going to just do that. I'm just gonna set these up exactly the same way. And and then I can, I can just trunk this top part in. So let's say we can take, we'll just keep this black, I guess. Uh, I'm gonna run this down here into this, this branch. I'm gonna run the branch, importantly. This will be, I mean, this is kind of the red and, or the, the green and the blue line, so we'll just keep this one blue, I guess. Um, this is both of them, depending on which one's active. This one over here is going to be the new battery, the black battery. So we've got our black line coming in there. We've got either one of these coming through here. And then, like we did before, you have to set up a blocker line to here, like this. And then we're gonna do the same thing to this switch we did to that one over there, um, but we have 98 arriving, so 97 available. So we're gonna set this to 96. Um, and there you go, now you have one coming out of there, 96 coming out of there, and you have 96 coming out of there. And so the only thing you have to do for the battery itself is you just add a branch down here so that you can uh, hook up to the charging block. So I'm gonna unhook the blue, the blue line and I'm going to daisy chain this second branch off of the first, like so. I can hook up, I can hook the, oops, I can hook the uh, blue line back up the exact same way it was run before. I'll just run it along here. And there we go. Let's see. There we go. Throw our little jumper and we're back up. And so the blue line's hooked back up and now this other one is gonna run to the black line. And so this one, it's, that's all we did. We just added a charging port basically so that we could hook up the black battery's uh, charging line. And there you go. The output of this is going to run to the blocker over here, um, just like the other battery did. And there we go. So now, perfect. Now, now what we gotta do is we have to change this um, to be the correct you know, we only got two going to the blue. So I'm gonna set this, what we got uh, 117, so 116, uh, that'll be 58 if you divide that by two. And now we have 58 volts going to our blue battery and 58 volts going to our black battery and they will both continue charging because they have zero active usage. So it doesn't matter, again, 
how much you put in. These will trickle charge all the way up to 24,000 Russ Watt minutes um, if you give them enough time. And so your your base is going to be running off of essentially this this uh, this battery's output, but because you have 180 going to it. You'll, it'll never die. So this acts as a, as a battery backup if you lose input power, and then it'll kick into the blue battery, and then it'll kick into the black battery, all independently of each other for a full real world 12 hours, which is absolutely amazing. Um, you can separate these batteries into, into certain areas of your base so that if this one's destroyed, you can destroy any one of these three batteries and the other two will continue to function. If you bust one of these, you still have eight hours of backup unless they bust another one. Um, so that, and then from here, all we have to do again is just run this to our switch, to our turrets over there. You'll notice this has uh, 96 coming out. The minimum we needed here was 95 because of, you know, nine turrets, it's 90, and then the four switches, that's 494, plus this switch is 95, and we got there with 96. We have one volt to spare. If we had used two OR switches here, we would have been shy of volt. That's why I told you to use uh, either XOR switches or one XOR and one OR. Uh, so that is it, and then, then they turn on, there we go. We got nine switches, one, or I'm sorry, <laughs> nine turrets, one switch, and 12 real world hours of battery backup. And you can test this, we can, we can, I can show you this works. Uh, let's say that the green battery runs out of juice and we'll simulate that just by unhooking its power output. You'll see them cycle. We've just swapped over here. Now we're on the blue side. So this has been released because we lost power there. So now we're on the blue battery. The blue battery is running. It's running all the way through here, but it's keeping this black battery out of service because it's zero active usage because it's blocker. Now let's say we lose the blue battery. Same thing, they shut down, they're gonna kick back on immediately because now they've swapped over to this black battery, which is another, you know, if it was full, four hours. And that is nine turrets, one switch, 12 hours. I don't got anything else, guys. If you have any questions, leave in the comments below or you can get me on my Discord. See you later.